Hello, my name is Dick Sturgeon. I'm a workers advocate for an organization called Workers Have Rights Too. Uh, we would like to thank Morningside College and Siouxland Community Media for uh, allowing us to do this program. What we're going to talk about today is very, very important. It's a, it's a subject we haven't touched on before. Uh, we have uh, known for quite a while that substances that we work with uh, on our jobs uh, can make us sick or even uh, cause death. And tonight we're going to we're going to talk about some of that. Can you give me some uh, examples of some of those materials? Well, yes, and, and we've had a lot of this come up lately. Uh, we, the popcorn workers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was found that uh, the substance that they were using for butter flavoring uh, for the popcorn worker it was, uh, was in fact deadly. It caused mm -hmm. a lung condition that uh, uh, in a lot of cases was, uh, was terminal. Uh, else manufacturing when they were here in town. Uh, a lot of the uh, workers down there, uh, a lot of the ladies developed what they call brown lung and that was uh, from the uh, from the dust uh, from the fabric that they were working with and they were inhaling okay. it. We have uh, a plant here that has a, a chromium tank and mm -hmm. uh, every year they have their workers go take an, a lung x-ray uh, to, to make sure that there's nothing developing. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's all kinds of s substances that we, uh, that we, we work with uh, and we take for granted. Uh, you know, uh, uh, some, of them are, some of them are manufactured dangerous. Some of them are just simply dangerous. Mm -hmm. I remember at a uh, grain elevator, we had, uh, we had a terrible problem with birds uh, in the loading area and stuff. And it was pretty messy and the guys were complaining about it and the boss, you know, didn't think there was anything unsafe about it. It was messy, but it wasn't unsafe. And I know I contacted the uh, Iowa Bureau of Labor and their hygienist told me that that was very, very unsafe, that there's a disease that uh, humans can get from that mm -hmm. and uh, uh, can cause all kinds of problems, including blindness. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that we a lot of things that we work with, and we we take it for granted. Uh, mm -hmm. We uh, green dust is a is a, a substance that you know is is there, and they're working mm -hmm. with green. But uh, we now know that uh, it causes explosions and it causes fires. Uh, uh, the Cargill plant uh, operates with uh, hexavine gas, and uh, uh, we we found out in the soybean plant uh, mm -hmm. south of the city that that's terribly explosive. So there's a lot of things that we consider to be safe, but they may not be. That's correct, and we and we have some good examples of that too. I mean, for years and years and years, pe uh, people worked with asbestos. Right. They covered pipes with it. Mm -hmm. They put it into insulation. Uh, the auto mechanics uh, uh, dressed uh, uh, brake shoes uh, in, and it was uh, asbestos brake shoes and that was getting, getting into the air and they were breathing that in mm -hmm. and, and 20 to 30 years later uh, it was causing a, 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 a fatal form of uh, lung cancer. On top of that, a lot of people that worked with asbestos would take their clothes home and, and their, their wife would wash those clothes. Mm -hmm. And we've actually seen cases where both the husband and the wife ended up uh, with uh, the, uh, the lung cancer mm -hmm. because of, of this substance. But, you know, who was to know exactly. uh, that, uh, that, 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 was, uh, that was so toxic? But that's a good example of stuff that, mm -hmm. that a person worked with 20 years ago causes them problems now. Right. Um, are there any laws that would protect us when working with uh, Yes, we like both this? we have a federal law which covers uh, which covers all workers in Nebraska, mm -hmm. South Dakota and Iowa. And then we have then we have an we we have an Iowa law too. Uh, and and that's good because uh, you know we have some protections here in Iowa that don't apply to uh, 
uh, to other states. So it's good that there's a federal law that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that provides that. Uh, it's called the right to know law, and it has certain requirements uh, that the employer has to follow. Okay, okay. So that's basically what the law provides. Then is yeah. And I, and I yeah. have a, a list, okay. it's, a, it's a fairly uh, long list. Uh, employers have to take and make an inventory of all the, uh, all the hazardous uh, okay. uh, substances that people are working with. Uh, if it's a, cleanse, cl a cleaner, mm -hmm. if it's a solvent, uh, if it's a, whatever the substance is, they have to go and make a complete inventory of all the hazardous chemicals that are being used. Uh, they have to acquire the material safety data sheets, as, uh, commonly known as MSDS, from the manufacturer of that chemical. Oh, okay. uh, and they have to keep that on file. They have to set up an, an in-house labeling system because a lot of times they'll get uh, a big drum of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, a solvent and they'll, they'll Put it in their own containers and send it out to different uh, different uh, uh, departments. Mm -hmm. The big drum has the warning labels on it and uh, you know the instructions oh, sure. of what to do and everything. But the uh, when they put it into the other containers, uh, it doesn't. So the law requires them to to label all the containers and to label them with. Uh, with all the cautions and mm -hmm. what to do if uh, you splash some in your eye or you ingest some, mm -hmm. uh, what, what you should do. And that comes to the next point that is so important, and that is to train the employees, the supervisors, and the employees in how to work with these chemicals. You'd be surprised how many people uh, uh, would come to see us that are mm -hmm. working with something. They've sat and they read the They've read the warning labels every day, mm -hmm. and all the cautions and the, and the requirements that they have wear a mask and everything else, and they haven't. Mm -hmm. And 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 they and they come to us uh, uh, saying that you know that they feel now it's awful unsafe. The employer is required to to do a training for those people so that they know what they have to have. And if if something does happen, like they splash them in their mm -hmm. eye or if they they get a skin irritation, uh, you know, what, uh, uh, what the first aid should do. Then they have to do a, uh, and this is, this is the federal and state law, they have to do a complete written hazard program. It's, it's, fairly, uh, it's fairly broad law that uh, mm -hmm. a, a lot of employers don't know about, and a lot of workers don't know it either. Oh, and that's exactly. one of the reasons for yeah. this program today is to, is let workers know that they have the right to know that. A worker has the right to know what he's working with. Exactly, exactly. Now is there any difference between the federal and the Iowa law? Yes, the uh, Iowa law has a couple of things that the federal law okay. doesn't. And the uh, Iowa law requires the employer, once they make up this list of hazardous chemicals, mm -hmm. uh, they're required to give it to the uh, local uh, the fire department and, oh, and, okay. also, and also to the, uh, and to the state. So that if, if, if the firemen come into a plant mm -hmm. uh, and, and say there's people down or they come into a plant, if they have that sheet, which they in Iowa they have to have, mm -hmm. they can okay. look on it and see if they got to come in wearing respirators or if they got to come in wearing protective suits or whatever it is that they need. Uh, Nebraska and South Dakota, there is not that requirement. In Iowa, though, it is. They have to notify the community and they have to give it to the to, uh, the list to the state, and that's really a big plus. Oh, definitely, it is definitely. Um, are there any steps that workers should take? Uh, workers have the right, and this is a little bad thing about the law. The law doesn't require the employer to come out and say to the worker, look at here, these are the things that, mm -hmm. that you're working with that are hazardous. The worker oh. has to ask for it. Uh, it's, it's not posted anywhere. They have to ask, actually ask for it. And workers have the right uh, to to have that, and they can't mm -hmm. be they can't be punished for it, or they can't uh, have any uh, 
repercussions because they, they asked for it. If a worker is working uh, and they got a barrel there with a warning sign mm -hmm. on it, uh, they, they, they should go in and get a complete list. And if that isn't on there, they, they then need to make the employer aware oh, sure. that what they're working with is not on there. They should also uh, check and, and make sure that uh, the, if they're working with a container that has got solvent or something in it and no label on it, make sure they know where that, where that came from. I encourage workers, if they have a substance in their department and they see the warning label mm -hmm. uh, during lunch or where it's not so obvious uh, to sit down and, and write down what that chemical is and what the warnings are and what the, uh, what the precautions are supposed to be mm -hmm. and what steps they, they should take if, uh, if there's an accident with it, if they inhale mm -hmm. it or if it's, like I said before, if it's splashed in the mm -hmm. eyes or if they ingest it, to write that down and, and keep it in a notebook or something so that if, uh, it, you know, if they break out in a, in a severe rash or sure. if they, or if they uh, have a, a medical problem, they can go back and, uh, and, and drag that out and mm -hmm. tell them. The other thing that workers can do, even if uh, there is no warning signs on the stuff and, and nobody is ruled to be toxic, if workers think it is, mm -hmm. uh, then they have the right to contact OSHA. OSHA has a hygienist. Uh, the Iowa uh, operates its own here and they will come in and they'll take and, right. and test that. They'll test the air to mm -hmm. make sure that the ventilation in a paint booth is okay or the, uh, or that uh, if they're welding that uh, uh, with argon or some gas mm -hmm. that the ventilation is all right and a person's not absorbing uh, something that's toxic, they have the right to do that. Two or more workers have the right to go to management and say, look it, we're not going to work without solvent. It mm -hmm. makes us sick, it makes us dizzy, uh, it gives us headaches, uh, we're just not going to work with it. Mm -hmm. They're protected by the National Labor Relations Act if two or more of them go together and, right. and get it completed. Right. We've run out of time real quick like and uh, this is a very important issue though and I would really encourage uh, uh, workers to pass the word that they have the right to know what they're working with right. and uh, exactly. they have the right to know uh, what they're breathing and what they're, uh, what they're putting their hands in. We'd like to uh, sure. thank Morningside College and Siouxland Community Media for providing uh, this, this opportunity. Yes. Morningside for giving us wonderful uh, studio and to the to the uh, volunteer staff uh, of Siouxland Community Media for, right. for producing this for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.